Hi guys, welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live. This is Sharon Oyella, and today I'm going to show you how I made this fantastic little cape for Radagast the Brown. So this is part two of a number of videos I'm going to have. I'm not sure how many there's going to be. I do know that there's a couple more videos coming because I'm going to be making his staff to hold and also his hat, which I've already done, but I haven't done it on video yet. And I want to make it a different color. Okay, so the hat and the staff are coming. Today we're going to be making the cape. So I'm not and before we get started, I'm just going to let you know that I am not a pattern maker. How I make clothes for these little characters is um, fit them right to the body. But you can take the techniques that I use in this video and make it for any size doll. And we're going to piece this together. And when I started, I had no idea I was going to end up with as much as I did. Um, I honestly didn't even think I was going to have a front part here. And it was kind of pieced together. But in the end, it's fantastic. I'm actually really in love with this cape. And this cape is actually kind of like a character on its own because it's poseable. I have put wire in there so you can pose different parts of it for photos. His cape is mostly made up of this cotton material right here. And the top part, I decorated it with this cheesecloth. And we'll talk more about the cheesecloth once we get to that part in the video. First, let's talk about this material here. So, so it was a little bit of a process to get to this color here. It's not difficult, but because there is a couple of steps to getting this color, I'm going to stick this part at the end of the video. And along with the fabric, I also used some paint. So I used black, burnt umber, cinnamon brown, and burnt sienna. I also used some tacky glue. Needle and thread to match the color of your cape. And I did use a little bit of yarn, very, very tiny bit of yarn. And that's just to decorate a little bit more around the edges. So it's not necessary, but if you want to add that decoration, then I used brown and this golden yellow. Maybe it's a mustard yellow. I'm not too sure what color that is, but it doesn't really matter. As long as you have like a earthy tone yellow, that would work. Okay, and if you want to make your cape poseable like I've done, I used this wire that I had in my stash. And this, I'm not sure exactly what the gauge is. It's very flexible. I mean, it's not very stiff at all. It's very tiny, so it would fit nicely inside seams, okay? So you just have to find yourself some very thin gauged wire. Okay, a pair of scissors, a pair of pliers will come in handy if you use the wire. So that covers the cape if you have your own fabric. If you're going to be dyeing fabric, you're going to go to the end of this video or look in the timestamps below, and that part of the video will have its own supplies list as well. So he's a seven inch doll and to cover him in the cape I cut a piece 12 inches wide and seven inches tall. And to be honest with you I did not choose those measurements on purpose. I didn't know how to make a cape. So what I did was just stand up the material like this and make sure that it would fit around him. So we're going to dive right into making his cape and I've already cut, dyed and sewed up to all the sides of this piece. So we'll put them in the center there. I'm thinking about maybe folding the sides in just like this and taking this corner and just tacking it here just to get me started with somewhat of a shape that I can work with. Alright guys, we got the one side figured out and I'm super excited about this because it looks awesome. So we got the sleeve with a little cuff there. And I also just installed a little wire here to make this part of the cloak posable. But first we've got to make the sleeve, so let's do that. So we're just going to take this part and then tuck it under. So just tuck that under to expose his hand. Okay, so that's tucked under. We can see his hand. Now we can take that off and we're going to sew around that tuck part. Alright, so I sewed down to here and now I'm going to stop. I'm going to stick that wire in there. And if your seam is sewed closed, just poke a little hole. 
and just up as far as it'll go, so right about here. And I'm going to cut this end. I'm going to leave a little tiny bit sticking out, and I'm just going to bend that over the inside seam. I'm going to sew that down once I get down there. And I just tucked it right there. And I'm going to bring this needle now. I'm going to sew this little section together, but I want to leave this open, like this side here. See it's open there? We're going to leave that open. So we're just going to sew this to the back side. And now I'm going to sew around this wire inside all the way down. You don't have to loop around it all the way down, but every couple stitches I would stop and loop it. Like right now I'll loop. So grab that loop and pull tight. Okay, once you get down to the bottom, make sure that you take this little lip there and pull it over. Because you want to sew over that so it doesn't move. So I'm going to wrap the thread around that. Now I'll wrap around it a couple of times so that wire can never be pulled out of there. And now I'll knot off for the last time. And carry my thread inside and away and cut free. And I did stick a wire in the bottom. I ran it all the way through. So I'm just going to create a little loop here so I can grab that first wire that I sewed into place. And I'm just going to sew the loops down. You can't really see them, but they're tucked inside there. I'm just going to sew around them so they can't come peeking out of there. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I love it. That's really cool. Now we're going to add this bit of cheesecloth around his robe, so let's do that. I'm going to show you how I dyed it first of all. So just to paint this kind of fabric, or any fabric, with straight acrylic paint, it'll end up really stiff. So what I do to help it stay a little bit on the softer side is I add my paint in to some water. I don't know, there's about a quarter cup in there. And I'm going to take some cinnamon brown and some burnt umber. I'm going to throw it in there. I just throw that in there. You don't have to leave it for very long. You just stir it up, make sure it's all coated. When I took it out of the bowl, I just squeezed the paint out like that. And when it was still bunched up like this, I ran it under the tap and then just squeezed out the excess water. And once you open it up, you're going to see that it's faded out quite a bit. And the reason why I do that with the water and the paint first, it just helps get the paint in all those little fibers. Okay. Now we're going to do the rest by painting it. There's some burnt sienna, cinnamon brown, and burnt umber. Okay. Get my paintbrush in there, just pick a color, it doesn't matter which one, and paint it on. And you don't have to cover the entire thing because you do want that variation of color in there, and you do want some of it to be faded out. So you just want to make sure you get some color on there. Okay, and then flip it over and do the other side. You'll notice once it's dry that some of it will fade right out. There'll be no color hardly at all in it, and you want that because it gives you a nice variation of color here. When I first cut this piece off, it actually came doubled, right? And I put that whole piece into the water and it stayed doubled. Okay, when it dried, now that's a doubled layer, and I sewed that double layer right on here, a piece. And I'll show you that in the next couple of clips, but I don't think I talked through it, so I just want to explain it now. So it was a doubled piece that I sewed on there. After that first part was sewn on, I did take the layers apart. And then I was able to cut off little bits that I wanted. Alright, so in the next couple of clips, like I said, we're going to be sewing this piece on. Let's get started. But as I was doing that, I was looking at the back of him, and I'm just wondering if we couldn't add a, in a little section here. 
like if I just split it with my scissors and then sewed in a little extra section and they would give me some more flare here instead of it going up and down. Okay, can't go back now. So how far should we go up? Right about here maybe? <laughs> I should just leave that wire in there, you know what, to be honest. I should just leave it in there. I should pull it back a little bit and just crimp this over. Maybe I'll do it that way. Is that the inside? Yep. Yeah, I'll do it that way. I'll do this side the same. So I'll just pull it back, crimp this over, and I'll sew that when I'm ready to. That way I don't have to take the wire out. Like that. Do you see where I'm going with this? Okay, so I'm going to sew from the bottom up, and we'll be back in a minute. So I got it done, and have a little bit of a thing going on up here, and that's just because I had troubles getting my needle to stay on the inside and not so on the outside. But I think what I can do to fix that is just create a little belt. So this will be a piece of that fabric that's folded on both sides to give a clean, even edge on both sides. And I'll sew this across here and it'll cover up that problem. Okay, so that worked. And what I did was I took the cape off, of course, and I sewed underneath so this was like doubled over twice to give a clean edge on top and bottom so when I put my needle through underneath I just felt my way inside there and sewed to the inside of this thing here so I didn't have to get any stitches on the outside except for the very ends so I'll see the front of his robe here so it does close up and I want to do the same thing but how do we do that so I was just playing around with a few ideas and I think I got it figured out so I'm gonna do this little part down here as well so I've already started if I double it over like this, I've already torn the bottom, so I've cut the bottom actually, and then just rub my scissors on the edge to rough it up. Look at that. Oh, I'm so happy about that. I really wanted to have the front done, and yeah, that is excellent. I also put a wire in there, too, so I have a little bit more control how it gets posed. Okay, so we're going to do the other side together. So I've already ironed over the side, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my wire in there now. I've crimped the top, and instead of sewing this, I'm going to glue it down. And this fabric, because I did dye it with that polish, it's a bit thicker now, and the glue doesn't show through like it did when I did the shoes there. Okay, and now I'm going to paint, this is the outer edge here. I'm going to paint the very edge with the black paint. Okay, and I'm just going to just put a little burnt sienna down this strip. I'm not painting a solid color, just getting the color on there. And then this bit here is two colored yarns that I've cut together. Okay, so I got brown and like a mustard yellow in there. I have a few strands, and I'm just going to cut them up into little tiny bits. I did try one color at a time, and it just didn't look right at all. So I found if I mix the colors together, it just came out a little nicer. Okay, I got my little pile of yarn. I'm just blending up the pieces now. And then you just take the yarn and stick it on the glue. Okay, and really push it in to the glue. And now I'm going to let it sit for about 20 minutes or so and just let that glue set. And the glue is dry now, so I'm just going to take a, another brush and just brush off the excess. And what I did on this side here is I added a little bit more burnt sienna. So I'm just going to squish the top together. And this is where my wire is going to come in handy because I'm going to kind of pull out this side here. Okay, and to get myself started, I'm just going to sew the very top down. And I can take this off. I'm just going to hold it with this little clip here until I get it off.
Okay, so I got this sewn up here, and then I sewed all the way down here. So that sleeve to this piece here. And then we get down here, it's a little bit different because um, this doesn't kind of match up with that. So what I did was, on this side, I just stitched it right here. So the bottom corner, and it's open here. So it again, it's sewn up here, all the way down here. And then I skipped this part and just did a couple stitches down at the bottom, just to make sure it all holds together. So I'll do the same thing on this side. I forgot this, this side is longer than this side, because this side is a torn part, so it didn't kind of reach the bottom. So this one, super easy, I can just sew it to the bottom seam. So I did that first layer last night before I went to bed, and then this morning I decided to add a little bit more brown to it. If you look at pictures of him online, he does have this patchy work here, and it looks like it once was covered in all of that, but it's faded over time and come off and whatever. <laughs> all right, guys, I have two pieces of fabric left. I was actually throwing this one into the trash, and then it caught my eye because look how wonderful <laughs> that looks. It just worn to perfection there. So I'm actually thinking about adding it to his sleeve here. So I'm going to give them the same sort of width right about there to start off with and then we'll take some dips. And instead of sewing this one, I'm going to glue it instead. Alright, so I went around the cape and just in little creases in different areas, I did add some black and burnt umber. And that's just like dry brushing, right? You know, you don't have very much paint on your brush. You're just kind of cleaning the brush off. And yeah, it just adds a little bit of wear and tear. Make it look like he's been running around the forest for a while. So I'm really happy with how this turned out, guys. I'm really, really grateful that um, I just kept going because I think it's fantastic. <laughs> And I love the color as well, so that's coming up in a minute, but first of all, I just want to say I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to be notified of the next videos that come up for him, make sure that you're subscribed. Also hit the bell notification so you'll know when the next videos are available. So I'll leave you now. I'll go work on the next couple of videos for you, and those should be ready soon. And if you want to see how I dyed that fabric, that's coming up now. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you soon. All right, so let's dye some fabric, and I've never done this before. In fact, when I started, I didn't know I was going to be using polish at all. I had started with instant coffee, and I just couldn't get the material dark enough, and I was about to give up when I remembered that I had this in my cupboard, and it's been in my cupboard for years. It's leather, premium polish, and it's dark brown. And so I have to put up a disclaimer. I did Google the ingredients in this, and most of the ingredients are natural. There are a couple things in there that could be considered toxic if you use the product over and over and over and over and over again. So if there's a lot of exposure to this product, you'd want to take precautions, okay? For a one-time use, if you're worried about it, do it outside or wear a mask. And of course, always wear gloves. The next thing I want to say is this is for display purposes only. I did not make this doll to be played with, okay? This is going to be displayed on a shelf. I'm actually going to be using this in the future for other projects because I love the color that it gave me and also the texture that it gave me. So this fabric feels a little bit different than this now. This actually feels like a cloak, like something you would find on a cape. And I use coffee to mask the smell of it. I know lots of people don't like coffee, but I love coffee so it, it worked out nicely for me. But there is a little bit of a polished smell when you're done. 
yeah, so you want to cover it with coffee or maybe leave it outside for a while before you work with it. All right, let's get started dyeing some fabric and we're gonna start off with some instant coffee. So we're going to pre-dye the fabric before we put the polish on there. And to be completely honest with you, I'm not sure if that's 100% necessary. It's just that when I started this project, I had no idea I was gonna be using polish. I thought I was only gonna be using instant coffee. And because I got such a fantastic color result for his cape, I'm gonna show you exactly what I done and then you can decide if you wanna use the coffee or not. So the first thing we do is get a cup of hot water and a half a cup of instant coffee. And to cut the acidity down in the coffee, I'm gonna use about a teaspoon of baking soda. And we're gonna mix that in there. And it foams up quite a bit, and that's totally normal. Looks like I got two cups of liquid in there now, but that's just the soda doing its thing. And I learned that uh, soda trick from journaling, because I stain paper with instant coffee all the time. And to reduce the acid in the paper, this is what you do. You add in some baking soda. Then you just add in your fabric. And I'm gonna leave it in there for about an hour at least. Okay, so it's been about an hour and I'm just going to rinse this out. And I'm gonna save my coffee stain because I re-dip my fabric after I've stained it with the polish just to get rid of the polish smell. Okay, now we're gonna rinse this out. And that was clean cold water in there. And now I'm gonna take the shoe polish and I just rub it into the fabric. Okay, one side is done, and now you gotta do the other side. And once you got it all covered, both sides, then I take hot soapy water. And it is dry, and to be honest with you, this actually turned out a little bit darker than the time I did it before. Um, maybe before I washed it a little bit too long, and it took out more color. I'm gonna go ahead and do the second coat because that's what I did the first time around, so let's do that. And again, I'm just going to take the polish onto my cloth and spread it on there. Now I'm going to wash it in the hot soapy water and I'll be right back. Okay, I gave that a good rinse in hot soapy water and then washed it off with um, plain water, plain hot water. And now I'm re-soaking it in that coffee just to get rid of that shoe polish smell. And after it's dry, of course, everything tones down, right? All right, so now I'm gonna go rinse this under hot water again and I'll set it aside to dry. And once it's dry, you'll see it's absolutely beautiful color. One last thing I'm gonna show you that I did do for his cape. So there is wrinkles in there and I was thinking about using my iron, but then I didn't wanna haul that out. I'm gonna use a straight iron. Now some of the stain I noticed did come off in there. So keep that in mind if you're gonna be using it, you'd wanna clean that off. I'm just going to flip over one side and this is how I ironed mine. And another great thing that I noticed about this is once the heat hits this fabric, it goes a little bit darker. So I'll just do this one side so you can see the difference in color that happens. Isn't that neat? So many things, so many exciting things. When I did his cape, I actually didn't even measure out the fabric when I cut it. I just kind of cut it real rough. And I used this opportunity here to straighten out the edges. Then after I got them sewed up, I did um, take my scissors to the inside here and cut that off. I actually got this hair straightener at a thrift store for like three bucks. So it's something that I'm just going to keep in my craft room. Like I said, I never straighten my hair anymore. I don't bother. Too busy crafting. <laughs> and then once you have the sides ironed out, then you can go ahead and sew them. And if you're thinking ahead, uh, remember when I put the wire in there, I thought of that after. That was an afterthought. You could actually stick the wires in and then sew around it, and then you wouldn't have to do it after. All right, guys, that brings us to the end of this video. And until next time.